Avenue in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is Pastor Lorraine Bowman. If you desire prayer, our prayer line number is area code 708-982-1789. Again, that number is area code 708-982-1789. We invite you to our services on Sunday morning with our morning church school at 9.30 a.m. Our morning worship service is at 11.30 a.m. On Monday night on prayer, we have our 7 p.m. prayer. We invite you to come and pray with us and see that God is moving in the midst, amen. Every Friday night at 7.30 p.m., we're in prayer, followed by our anointed service at 8.30 p.m. We invite you to any and all of our services. At this time, we're going to have a scripture reading by our own teacher, Daphne Jones, and prayer by our own evangelist, Viola Ball. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm going to read for your hearing Psalm 63, verses 1 through 4. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. 
My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To thee, thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Heavenly righteous Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God, we give you thanks on tonight, Father. We give you glory, God. We thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that you didn't forget about us. How you sent your son, Jesus. Glory to God. He who knew no sin became sin for us. We thank you, God, that you called us unto you, God. You called us with a holy calling, oh God. And for that, we give you glory. Father, we pray that the word will go forth on tonight, God. That your word will heal tonight, oh God. That your word will deliver, oh God. That your word, God, will set free, Father. In the precious name of Jesus. Somebody somewhere needs you right now, God. We send your word tonight, God. For you said you sent your word to heal them. And to deliver them, God, uh, from their destruction. And for that, we thank you. We thank you, God. We glorify you. You're worthy, huh? You're worthy, God. You're worthy. We give your name the glory. Oh, God, let the words of our mouth, oh, God, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Glory to his name again. If you've just tuned in, amen, you've tuned in to the Deliverance Press Center Hour. Again, our location is 7223 South on Ashland Avenue here in Chicago, Illinois. If you desire prayer, our prayer line number is area code 708-982-1789. I'll repeat that number. That's area code 708-982-1789. If you like to attend any of our services, we have Monday night prayer at 7 p.m. Amen. Our church school starts on Sunday morning, amen, at 9.30 a.m. Our morning worship service is at 11.30 a.m. And every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. when prayer, followed by our anointed service. And we invite you to any and all of our services. Amen. If you just desire prayer, amen, someone will meet you on the other end and will pray with you and believe God with you, amen, that God is able to do it and to meet every need. But at this time, amen, we like to introduce to some and present to other, amen, a woman, amen, that has been standing on the wall, amen, for over 40 years, amen, that has been preaching the word of God, amen, for over 20 to 30 years, amen. God has anointed her, amen, and has given her a call, amen. And at this time, we'd like to introduce to you our pastor here at the Deliverance Prayer Center Church, none other than our own Pastor Lorraine Bowman, amen. Go back to the old way of love, loving right in the house of God, because we can't wax cold. We can't allow the enemy to cause us to wax cold because the world is cold. The world is cold now. Proverbs 4 and 23, and it reads, keep thy heart. See, I quoted it before I even showed you where it was. Keep your heart with all diligence. Diligence is continually beating your, working on yourself. Let me give you another diligence. You're diligent concerning maybe you, you, you a career or something that you want on a job or you're going for school and you want to make that master's degree. So you're going to go and do your study, do your research, and you're doing it with all diligence. Sometimes the light, you, you, you miss sleep at night because you're up reading your words. You're up doing things with diligence because I want to pass this class. I want to make my A out the class because I'm going to be diligent for concerning thing of God that I can make that A, that I can make the grade, that when Jesus comes, that he can find me so in the will of God. So you got to diligently examine yourself, cut all things that's not like God. 
sometimes it calls for friends to be cut off. Sometimes it's not about how long you've known each other. Well, I've been knowing her since, since I was 20, from old landmark, 45, 46 years. But you know what? If my right arm will fit me, I got to pluck it up. I can't, I, can't give pray, I can't give place. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, give no place to the enemy. If it's something that even though you've known her these many years, but if they're always bringing garbage and, and, and dumping you with a whole bunch of stuff, you got to decide that, you know what? I love God. I love us thou me. There you go, Holy Ghost. He said, love us thou me more than these. I love you. I love you, but I can't get prayed to a bunch of gossip and mess because I'm going somewhere. I got to reach my goal. I got to see Jesus. And like Elder was saying, you got to be able to hear from God. And if you bite and devour and you contaminate yourself, you block your own earlobes. You block your own heart from hearing from God. The Bible says the heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? But the Lord don't stop it. He said, but I, the Lord, I search the heart. He'll search the heart. He'll try and see just what you're made of. And sometimes the trying of your faith that he'll cause us to go through tests and trials to show how much of the word we're really walking in. How much are we willing to suffer? You know, we have to go through suffering. We don't ask for suffering. Nobody in their right mind will want to just suffer. Yeah, let me, I just want to suffer. No, no. But as I go through this, this pilgrim's journey, Lord, help me to trust you, to believe in you, to stand in your word, and then stand in the right way. That while I'm going through I don't cause you to go through because I'm going through. I don't know if you ever know, but sometimes you have people, they're going through, and everybody in the whole house is going through because you're going through. You got attitude in the whole, everybody in the whole church, you, know, you got attitude because you got attitude with everybody walking in here. What you want and what you, and, 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 and they senior citizens. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not here, not here, not, 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 come over here, the table is spread, the feast of the Lord is going on, but I'm talking about, I heard this on somebody, somebody else, and I said, they see your citizens, they older than over here, they about ready to check up out of here, 70, 80 years old, and they got junk and mess, how do they love, do they know where they're going, do they know how much time they got, you got to examine yourself, it's not even about time, it's not even about age, you could be young and still be cankerous and full of stuff. But you got to know, you got to lay aside the weight and the sin that doesn't be the essential, that you can be light for the flight, that you can be light to go up. When Jesus called me, I want to be light for the flight. I want to be ready when he called my name. I want to live so. I want to live so that he can use me anytime, anywhere. Keep your heart. Keep my heart, Lord. Examine my heart. Search me, oh God. I do this as daily, do this daily. Lord, search my heart. Show me anything in me that's not. Purge me with kisses. Wash me. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew in me the right spirit. A lot of people don't have the right spirit. Their spirit has gotten off. It's gotten messed up. That's why they can't win anybody because their spirit is not right. But God can create in you. If you be honest with God, lay it on the altar. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me, Father, the right spirit. How, what is the spirit of me coming to the brother or the sister? Is my spirit right when I approach them? If I have an all against the brother or sister, the Bible says go to them and them alone. But first of all, before I go to them and them alone, I got to make sure my spirit is right yes. when I go to you. Yes. My spirit, gotta, I got to check myself before all I come right. to you. Come because if not, I'm going to take you through. You, sometimes some things you just have to put on the shelf till you know you get yourself right and fast and pray and break that flesh down and beat it down. Beat your body, bring it up so that when you go to your sister, this is, this is what the one mother said. That the devil can find nothing in me. When I go to my sister brother, and this is somebody that I know in Africa, and they realized that this lady had killed their child. Something they worked, something, I don't even know the whole detail of it. I saw them at Mother Dupree's service or something. Anyway, they... Uh, uh, had to go to that sister, had to face that sister, but she said, God created me a clean heart. Let my spirit be right. That when I go to them, that the devil can find nothing in me. Because if you go with the wrong spirit, you're going to go and, and get a knife or get something to try to hurt that person that did, did it to your daughter or did it to your brother, your sister. But that the devil can find nothing in me. You got to purge yourself from these. You got to create a clean heart. Ask God to do it over in me again, God. Give me the right spirit, oh God. Give me the right heart. Create in me, Father, a clean heart. Renew in me, Jesus, the uh, right spirit. 
the spirit of God got to dwell on the inside. It's the spirit of God that's on the inside that will come up, that will give you how to treat people right. But when the word of God comes sometimes, it brings correction. It brings reproof. And the word of God says correction is grievous. Sometimes you get grieved because the word is just telling you, just examining you. How she know that? What you got? I will go back and say, thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. Guess what? I'm going back on my knees and say, God, break up that follow ground in me. Cleanse me. I'm not going to go to hell over this stuff. I'm going to let it go. None of this stuff down here is worth my salvation. Because you know what? We're just passing through. We're just in this world for a short time. We don't know when he's going to call our name. So we got to redeem the time and not take it. You know, if something happened or something, if you, if you get hurt or somebody takes something, realize that we're in this world. This stuff here is just fleeting. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna be on our way home. We can't take it's appointed unto man once again after death, death to judgment. And we can't take anything with us. That's why you can't go and lose your salvation over no material stuff. You got to let it go. You got to love right. You got to treat people right. And if they dare come back to you, like the sister came back to that lady. And she said when she had to come back to her to look her in the face, she said, I had to look at her. She said, and I said, Lord, let me see her that the devil can find nothing in me. So when she came to her, knowing what she did to her daughter, she said, praise the Lord. Just try to see where you're at. Sometimes people will come personally to you just to see. I'm, I promise you, they know how to push that button. They know how to come to you. But you got to have the love of God so in you, embedded in your heart and your soul, that you know what, that you know what, irregardless. She's going to a better place. God got her. And as for me and my house, yes. I'm not going to let it cause me to lose out with God. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. I promise you I know what I'm saying. I promise you I know what I'm saying. The Lord just revealed to me something that happened in my life, something just exactly like that happened to me. Just the Holy Ghost just brought it before me. There was somebody that came against my baby in a wrong way. Called himself a brother, but they came against my baby. And I knew it. And the Lord had to, give, had to work on my heart and begin to tell me that I had to get that matter straight. Because I didn't want to die and go to hell hating my brother or my sister. Just brought that back to me. I, 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 it, it's, it's something for somebody out there. I know what I'm saying. And so I had a chance to see them. And when I saw them, I told them. I saw them and they saw me. They passed. They knew what they did. They, they, I said, I jumped out the car. You know, I jumped out the car. I said, pull your car over. And they got, and I jumped out the car. And I, all I got out the car. And I said, God bless you, my brother. I said, you know what? You're not worth my salvation. You're not worth my salvation. Go on to your church. I pray God save you and do things we have to do. But the devil can find nothing in you. Sometimes you be tried by the very words that you go through with. Love us thou me. Well, you, you love God. It's easy to love God when everything is going well. When everybody patting you on the back. Oh, it, this is, oh it's lovely. It's low. They all love me. But oh, when you get bitter and angry and people come against you and mess with your child or do something contrary, can you still love them? Can you still set up this to the moment and say you love them? Yes, I may pass that test because I pulled, got them pulled over and I said, give me a hug, brother. Because I helped, them, I helped them make it on in to God. I took them back and forth to prayer, back and forth and back and forth until they came, said yes to God. They go to somewhere else, but it don't matter. But that the devil can find nothing in you. Not saying they're a devil. They say they're elder now. Praise the Lord. But that the devil can find nothing in you. You got to be tried in this word of God. You're going to be tried. Sometimes you can, you can talk about, like the said, you can talk about Old Testament. You can talk about Peter. I know Paul. But who are you? What did you actually go through? Did you, do you actually know what this is? This is really sad? Have you actually been offended or have come, somebody come up against you, come up against your family, and you can yet turn away and say, you know what? I refuse to let anything. What shall separate you? Thank you, Holy Ghost. From the love of God. Will I let that separate me? Will I let that cause me to go to hell? I say, God, I've come too far. I've walked too long with you. I can't let this separate me. But then it's, it's your baby, it's your family. But then you know what? Is it worth your salvation? You've got to sit up there and count up the cost yourself. Love us thou me. But God said, I take care of everything. Love us thou me more than these. You got to prove that I love you, Lord. And because I love you, I got to humble myself. And if I have to be the one to come to the person, I have to do it. Whatever it takes to walk with God, 
I'm willing. And I actually, this actually happened. I had to go and get that matter straight. And the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon wrath or anger. Wrath, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, malice. But, they don't, but you don't know what they did. God know what they did. But you got to learn how to let it go. Give it over to God. And sometimes, you know, as I'm bringing this out, sometimes people have offended you in other churches, other places you come from. Sometimes you bring those offenses over here. Because you never got healed, you never got delivered, you never got free from my old church or whatever was stood up. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about me. Stood up, put out, whatever, whatever you went through. You never got healed from that. So you bring that same offense over here. But God wants you to let go today of those offenses. Let go of those people that did that to you. Pray for them, love them, but make sure that when you lift up holy hands, lift it up without any wrath or any doubt, nothing in my heart. I refuse to allow anything to separate me from the love of God. Yes. And when I was offended, I was, I was whatever, stood up, whatever. I was able, God gave me the victory in that because I, I tell you, he gave me the victory in that. Because the mother that offended me and did that to me in that church and stood me up in that congregation that I was in, before she left this earth, I was able to go to her. She was in a wheelchair and get on my knees. And I said, I had to, because I want to go with God, sister. This is how much you love. Got to prove you love God. I want to go back with Jesus. So I don't care about flesh. I don't care about you saying, she come in, she, 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 she look at her, she just bowed. I don't care what you think if I'm going to make it with God. You got to prove whether you love God, loves out me. Whether I got down on my knees to that mother in the wheelchair. And I said, mother, this is sister Bowman Newsom. Used to be Newsom before I married. I said, sister Bowman Newsom, said, you would know who I am. But mother, I want you to forgive me for what, anything I ever did that even caused the offense. But you forgive me, mother. The mother's gone on to glory. She's gone on to glory. But I had to make that peace with God. I had to reconcile. There's things, thank you, Holy Ghost, he's giving me this. There's things that people have not reconciled yet. They have not let stuff go. They're yet carrying issues and things. How do you think, do you think God can, you wonder why God can't hear you? Because you got too much on the line. You got too much on too much weight or matter on your mind. You cannot let go. You I, I hear the Lord say offenses. It's offenses. People are carrying offenses year after year after year after year. And you have not let it go. You can still rehearse it as if it's fresh and you still hold that offense against that brother or that sister, against that mother, against that person that did it to you. And you don't know what they've done. They may have gone on and got it straight with God a long time ago. But you're still holding that offense. You've got to be willing to let it go. That's the love walk that God gave me to walk. Amen. To love. By this shall all men know. Not when we're going, everything is going fine with us and we're happy together. But when I have to go through whatever tests or trials I have to go through, or it's a fit, the greatest among you, Holy Ghost said, be, be the servant. I'm greater than you in the spirit of God. Got the Holy Ghost in me. I'm just saying, somebody, I'm not saying you, but I say you, for using you. <laughs> Maybe you're not saved, and I'm saved. So I'm the greater one live on the inside of me. So the word of God said, the greatest among you, I got the great, I got the greatest one on the inside. Be the servant. Sister, you forgive me. Miss Bailey, forgive me. Brother, forgive me. Because the greater one lives on the inside of me. It shouldn't be that I walk in and out and they can't, we can't, that the devil, they can't find nothing in me, that I'm not holding no offense, that I can leave there with a clean slate, that I walk with God. That's my, that's, that's the life that I have to live. That's where he got me at. That I got to examine myself daily because we're getting close to the wire. We're getting close to the line. And there's gonna be some more people that God's gonna take gonna pass on up out of here. I don't know who, when, where, what, what could be out there on television land. There's some I prayed for, and I went there and prayed for them. The Jones family. I went to pray for Mother Jones. She saw me on TV. I went to pray for her. When me and the other boy went to pray for her, she saw me on TV. She said, Okay, I see. She said, pray for her, and then she said, then she turned around and said, Go pray for my daughter. My daughter's a backslider. We went to the west side. We prayed for her daughter. Her daughter made up her bed, went back to her church on the west side, got herself right with God, got back with the Lord, and she died. The daughter died. Then the mother said, okay. She came back to where she stayed, the one that saw me on TV. I went to her. She came to the church for a while. After a while, mother said, I got it right now. I got my daughter into heaven. Now I'm ready to go be with the Lord. Thank you, Mother Bowman, for working with me. And now mother and daughter is in heaven right now because I learned how to love right. God, this shall all men know that they're disciples. By the love. I went to both, both home goings, and they made it into glory. You got to know 
Sometimes it could be a person's last chance. It could be their last time in this earth. You don't know how long that life is. So much is happening even with the young children, young people. I'm telling you, it's prayer time like never before. It's like I'm not praying enough. I'm not seeking them enough. Because so much cruelty to children is going on. I don't know if you saw it, even with that young little boy, that little boy, that little baby on the internet that went viral. Little bitty baby. And he came home and said, told his mother, just kill me. Kill me because they beat him up and they told him, you don't belong on this earth. And they beat him up so bad. He, he went viral. And I know he gave, raised $30,000. It was on Facebook and it was on Channel 5. But he said, Mama, just kill me. I don't belong. I don't look like they look. Just, just kill me, Mama. Don't let me live. These babies are suffering with so much stuff. If your heart don't ache and go out to pray for that family, pray for those children, I don't know where you live. I don't know where you're at. It's time to pray. It's time to seek God. And while I was yet talking about that at the house today, the young lady came by my house today, 24-year-old little young lady, said, that ain't all. She stepped in front of the TV. She said, another young girl, she told me about the, the man that was working on her job, where that she, the, 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 the man's daughter had run the race. She was doing a, uh, a relay race. I'm just going to say relay, relay race, running a relay race. As she was running the race, she won, and they beat her up so bad, the man's daughter up so bad that she's in a coma right now. So right now, I pray in the name of Jesus, all this mental cruelty. Where are these children, where are these people coming from? That they're killing, they're so cruel, they're so angry. And you got time to worry about peeing out little stuff like this. We got to let this stuff go and get on our knees and pray and take up a well for these babies. These children are hurting. They don't have no outlet. They don't know nowhere to go. If they come to church, they don't want to come to church with somebody mean and mad. You got to lay aside every weight, every sin, and that you love right. And in my closing, that all men will know that we are the disciples by the love we have for one another. You got to love right. And this last little part here, Proverbs 12 and 1, whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. If you take the most earnest heed to the word that you've heard all through the week, all these weeks you've heard, you love knowledge. You want knowledge. You want to grow thereby. You want to heed, take the most earnest heed to the word of God. At least I let it slip. I can let this slip. I can. There's people that have walked with God so long, and at the very end, they let it slip, and they're gonna be. They're, they're not gonna make it to heaven. They're not gonna make it. So that's why we got to live right. We got to walk. We got to diligently seek after God and love right, and examine ourselves when the word comes. Let it be a mirror to you, to show you what's on the inside of you. And you ain't gotta come to me. You can go in your private time in your bedroom, wherever you are. Say, God, it's me, oh Lord. Lord, I stand in need of prayer. Lord, take it out by the roof. Lord, I want to be holy. I want to get my life right. I want to make it to heaven because I don't, have, I don't want to have run this far. You did run well, but who did hinder you? You cannot obey the truth. I don't want to have run this far and miss the mark at the end. That's why we got to strive to make it in. Strive. We're striving in this last lap. We're striving. We're running this last lap. We've already made three quarters. Now we're in the final quarter. So we got to strive with everything we got on the inside to make it in because many I say unto you will seek to enter in and will not be able to so strive to make it in in Jesus name God bless you love the people of God God bless you